In this video, we'll cover how to register your property for home sharing in Los Angeles. You'll want to start by going to planning.lacity.org. That is the site we're looking at here. You'll want to scroll down until you see these icons here at the bottom. And we're going to scroll down until we reach the home sharing icon. And we're going to click on that icon. This page takes us to the home sharing information site. So it has information on timeline, key steps, eligibility, and documentation requirements. As you scroll down, you can find more information. And you can see how to register online. You'll scroll down until you find this teal button here to register online. There's also a frequently asked question section, administrative guidelines, and your home sharing ordinance. So we're going to click on register online. So this is the portal. You can see that there are three options here. Register for a home sharing permit, which we'll focus on today. Update the list of sites where you advertise. This is very important to note as you have 24 hours after creating a new listing or advertisement to report it to the city. So if you create a new Airbnb listing, for example, uh, you have 24 hours to um, update that list of sites where you are advertising your home sharing. The third option here is for landlords or property owners who wish to prohibit home sharing on their property. So if they are renting out their property, they can put their um, property on a list of um, home share applications that would automatically be denied. Noting that the registration period is July 1st, 2019 through October 31st, 2019. So this will allow applicants and registrants to gather all of the necessary documentation they need. So you'll notice that the first screen of registration covers main eligibility requirements. So the top checkbox only applies if you are renting or leasing the property. Um, if that is the case, you will need to provide an affidavit signed by both you and the property owner or landlord that approves your participation in home sharing. The affidavit must be dated and notarized to include the name, address, phone number, email um, of the host, property owner, landlord, uh, and identify the address of the property. So noting that. Um, that's not mandatory to move on, but the bottom four checkmark boxes are. So we have the rental unit I am registering is not subject to affordable housing covenants, rent stabilization, and or is not income restricted under city, state, or federal law. You can look up more information here um, if needed. The second item here is the home sharing will not occur in a vehicle that is parked on the property, a storage shed, trailer, temporary structure, or other structure not built for residential use. The third box that I'm checking is the rental unit I am registering is not subject uh, not the subject of any pending citation. And the fourth option here is I will not apply for or obtain more than one home sharing registration or operate more than one home sharing rental unit at a time in the city of Los Angeles. So I'm clicking next here. Uh, and then we ask is the rental unit you are registering for home sharing your primary residence? Your primary residence is the property that you reside in for more than six months, months, excuse me, each calendar year. Um, so we're going to click yes for the sake of a demo. If not, you'll need to have an accessory dwelling unit with a building permit prior to January 1st of 2017. Noting that you can direct all questions about any of this to planning.home-sharing at lacity.org. And that's on each page of this process. But for demo's sake, we're just going to say yes. This is my primary residence. What is your role in renting the property? I am the owner or I am a tenant lessee. So we're going to select owner for the demo's sake. Does the address uh, on your California driver's license match the address for the rental unit you want to use for home sharing? If we click yes, um, we can streamline the process a bit. So uh, essentially, our system can pull your name, date of birth, your first name, last name, date of birth, and address. So you won't have to type that in manually. Um, and it is also considered proof of primary residency. So you'll only need one additional proof of primary residency versus if you don't have a driver's ID, um, driver's license that matches the, sh the home sharing address, you'll actually have to type that in manually and then provide two proof, uh, proofs of prim primary residency. 
So we'll need to have the photo identification that I've just mentioned. And then we need one of the following documents, a California voter registration card, um, or one of the other options here, a vehicle registration, health insurance, um, bill, etc. So I'm just going to select one of those. Now noting again, if I was typing this in manually, it would say, please provide two of the following documents. And another thing to note about this page is that if I was a renter, um, I would have another section down here with an upload option for that affidavit that I mentioned specifically relevant to renters. Now we are taken to a page that says um, we must upload the front and the back of the driver's license. So it's really important to note the front or the back and the back of the driver's licenses um, are required. Um, it's easiest, it's probably easiest for most folks to take their smartphones and take a really clear, crisp photo of the front and the back of their driver's license. So that's what I would recommend doing. And of course you can scan it as well. Um, so then we are going to um, select front here and it's going to upload we're also going to select the back at the same time here and we're just going to wait for those two things to upload okay now you can tell when something's uploaded when the green bar goes away um, and also you can see the names of the files down here if you needed to delete and start over, you certainly could do that by clicking this trash can and then um, clicking again. You can also drag um, your files here as well. You don't have to click on them to upload. Now, the following information was extracted from the driver's license and used in the registration. So at this point, you want to confirm that it is correct um, or not. So you can click yes, the information is correct. No, I would like to retry it, like maybe the photo you had was blurry or no, I will enter my details manually. So for the sake of the demo, we're going to click yes, the information is correct. Does the home sharing property you are registering have a unit number? If so, what is that? And then what is your mailing address? What is your phone number? What is your email address? Oops. So you would put your email address in here. Are you the local responsible contact person for the rental unit that you are registering for home sharing? Um, if, you if you click no here, you're going to be asked, well, who is that local contact um, in, case, uh, in case we need to contact them for some reason? What is their name, phone number, and email address? Um, and we're just going to click yes. The next question here is about um, habitable rooms. So it's important to note what a habitable room is. Um, so Habitable rooms include any enclosed room area with the exception of a lobby, hall, closet, storage space, bathroom, utility room, service porch. Um, you can see the, um, you know, we'll link to the, the ordinance in here so you can actually see the definition of that. Um, so a habitable room um, would include an enclosed area um, such as a bedroom, a living room or a kitchen. So if I had a one bedroom house with a living room and a kitchen, technically that would be three habitable rooms. So it's important to note that a maximum of two persons, uh, excluding children, per habitable room may sleep in a home sharing unit. Do you have a current business tax reg registration certificate with the appropriate transient occupancy tax classification with the Office of Finance? Um, some of you may click yes on this and um, uh, if you don't know that you have one you probably don't have one uh, and this process will help um, streamline that that um, procedure as well so we're just going to click no for the sake of the demo and um, this um, pr uh, process will uh, address you getting that certificate 
Are you currently advertising your rental unit on any hosting platforms? So if you're currently active and advertising on Airbnb, etc., VRBO, Flipkey, you'll want to click yes, and you'll want to put the exact URLs that you um, for your property. Um, if you click no, and you are just planning on at some point in the future um, creating listings, you'll want to be very um, uh, clear on which sites you would like to advertise your rental unit. And again, you have 24 hours to report those. And noting, you'll also want to put any kind of registration number you have um, on every single one of your listings once you have a registration number. So now we get to the documents required page. And since I've already uploaded the license, um, the, other op the other piece I needed to upload was proof of primary residency other than license. So I'm going to click on vehicle registration. Now we get to the payment page and this is how much you owe based on the fees and the processing fee. So the application fee itself is $89. Uh, if you pay by bank account, um, the fee is very little. It's less than 1%, so 0.8%. Um, and so it's a 72 cent fee and then if you pay by credit or debit card you will have to pay a little bit more um, two dollars and ninety seven cents so bank account would be like an electronic check or ACH payment you would need your account number and bank routing number and credit card um, is uh, the standard credit card number the expiration date the CVC code in the back and also your billing zip code this is the summary screen and you'll be able to edit anything from this page. Now just noting, um, if you did edit something from this page, you're actually put back in the process. You have to kind of go back in the process from that point in time and answer all of the same questions. However, um, the information is pre-populated for you um, in most cases. It should be in all cases, but um, you may have to retype um, something out. Now, um, uh, so hopefully at this point, everything has been completed correctly, um, but if you did need to make any edits, you certainly could. And now we get to this um, declaration, uh, excuse me, declarations page. This is a list of certifications that serve as e-signed affidavits, uh, and they all need to be check, uh, checked off. So I certify that I authorize any hosting platform on which my primary residence is listed to provide the city my listing, rental activity, and the contact information. I certify that I consent to receive all city notices and citations with my home sharing registration by both email and US mail, the address used for home sharing. I certify that I consent to reasonable requests by the department to inspect records required to be kept and preserved by the host pursuant to the ordinance. I certify that I will reside at the unit to be used for home sharing for more than six months out of the year. So we're going to check these off as I go through. Third one here is I certify that the home sharing will not occur in a vehicle parked on the property, storage shed, trailer, temporary structure, or other structure that is not built for residential use. I certify that I will not advertise nor book a guest stay that exceeds the maximum occupancy requirements of two persons excluding children per habitable room. I certify that I will provide a copy of the home sharing guest code of conduct to all guests. And I certify that the property complies with all required safety features, including working fire extinguishers, smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, in compliance with fire life and safety codes, as well as provides information related to emergency exit routes on the property to all guests. So we're going to click next there. And then we arrive at the e-signature page. This is essentially an I declare under penalty of perjury page. So you'll want to read this um, carefully. And you'll want to sign. And if you wanted to start over, you could certainly do that uh, or click next. And then we have a credit card debit card. So I am actually going to um, use a test credit card here. And so again, you have the credit card information um, the expiration date, the CVC code on the back, and the zip code. And if we, just to show you, if we clicked bank account, you'd have the routing number, the bank account number, and the bank name. 
So I'm going to just have to enter that again. And again, this is just a test credit card. Then we're going to proceed with payment. Now, assuming the card um, or the payment method is approved, um, we'll get this message. Thank you for your home sharing registration submission. Your application has been issued. Your pending registration number is as follows, right? So we have this pending registration number right here. So you may begin listing your home sharing unit while the department reviews your application as long as you have a pending registration number. Please note that all listings for your home sharing unit must display the pending registration number. And additionally, within 24 hours of creating any new listings for your unit on any hosting platform, you must report each listing URL to the city via this online registration portal. If for any reason your application is rejected during the review period, the department will notify you through the email you provided that the pending registration number is no longer valid and must, you must immediately remove all home sharing listings and discontinue home sharing activity. So that is the process for registering. Now I do want to note that if you um, are in a parcel that is, or your property is um, uh, in a parcel that is banned um, home sharing, um, I want to show you what that will look like. So this process will not take long to demo. Uh, I just wanted to show you what it would look like um, if for some reason your home share application is in an area that does not allow home share applications. So our system is constantly checking databases in Los Angeles to see if there's any kind of disqualifier uh, or disqualifying event that would make a home share application ineligible. So this could be something like um, there's a, a, a rent controlled, the, the home share application is in a rent controlled building, or perhaps the landlord or the property owner has actually notified the city that they just simply don't want tenants having a home share there. So just to demo what you will see, you'll, you'll learn this information um, if you're on one of those parcels um, real time. You would click register for a home sharing permit and I'm just going to, again, I'm just going to say I'm the owner here. And then the next piece here is, is there a rental unit that you are registering, your primary residence? We'll say yes. We'll say I'm the owner. Um, we'll actually say no, my license is not a match, so I have to enter some more information manually, which is okay. And then we're told what we need to have on hand that we'll, we're, uh, we'll need to upload these in a moment. And then when we get to the page um, uh, for the assessor's ID number, so when, if we don't have um, uh, our address that matches where the home share is on the driver's license, we'll be asked to, ask, uh, to enter the assessor's ID number. So I'm gonna enter one in. And then you can also look up that information here as well. It's hyperlinked. And we're going to click next. Now you can see right away that we know that this unit is not eligible um, for, or it may not be eligible for a home sharing registration for the following reasons. And the reason is below here. This rental unit is subject, um, in this case, um, this rental unit is subject to affordable housing covenants, rent stabilization ordinance, and or is income restricted. Um, so whatever the reason is that the um, property is not eligible for home share. We will have a high level explanation here. And then you have one of two options. Um, would you like to continue and request a manual review of your registration? So please note you will be required to do two things. Pay the non-refundable application fee, which is $89 plus the processing fee. Two, provide an explanation detailing why you believe the stated reason is invalid. And three, on the upload screen, you would see an additional section that says upload documentation supporting your provided explanation. So you can choose to discontinue your registration at this time or uh, until you had the appropriate documentation or um, perhaps you decide you don't want to have a home share um, registration after all. Or yes, you can request a manual review uh, and understand that the application fee is non-refundable. I will upload documentation detailing why the stated reason is invalid. So we're going to click there 
and you would enter your explanation here. You want to be as detailed as possible. Um, and again, you, you will also be asked to upload uh, documentation on the upload screen as well. And then the rest of the registration process is the same. The only difference is that when you get to the final screen, um, rather than having an actual pending registration number, you will it will just say thank you for your home sharing registration submission. Your application will be reviewed by the planning department to verify if your rental unit can be used for home sharing. You will be contacted if there are any questions. You will receive your home sharing registration number via email if your application is approved. So noting you will not have a pending registration. You will not be allowed to um, have those listings up there uh, until you have an actual registration number. So good luck with your short-term rental registrations. If you have any questions about the Los Angeles um, ordinance, you can contact planning.home-sharing at lacity.org. Again, that's at the bottom of all of the, um, all of the um, screens here. Thank you very much.